Okay, so today what we're doing is we're changing the lock cylinders on a 87 to 97. It'll be the same process on a Ford truck. Uh, this is on crank windows and manual locks. If you have power windows and power locks, it's a little different. You, um, all you're going to need to do first off is you want to take these door skins off. Now, I'm going to be doing it on that side. I already did it on this side. Uh, and then I figured I should probably video it. So, all you're going to need is, there's a Phillips head screw right in there. So, there's an O-ring there. A little Phillips head screw there. There's a Phillips head screw here in the top right corner of the door skin and then if you're on the passenger side it'll be a basically just a flipped image and then if you take your crank window and you pop this back and down inside of there there's a little torx uh what size of torx was it come on focus focus t27 so you take that t27 out these two out and then it's just pop clips uh, you do need to pull the crank off the crank comes off first and then you pop pull the Christmas clips out Christmas tree clips out and then this door skin will come off and then if you choose to you don't have to but if you want to pull this lower trim off it's just got a bunch of Phillips head screws there's one here one here one here one there one down here and one right in here in the back corner and then, uh, then once you get this top trim off, there will be one here-ish in this area, another one in this area, and then there may or may not be another one in this area. There's a third hole for it, but mine does not have a screw in it. So that's all you need to do to take it out. And then it is a little bit of a fight to kind of get the skin past these handles, so I like to just kind of open them just a hair and then wiggle them open and close as you're trying to pull the skin up, and then eventually you'll get it through. So... I will go start taking the other side apart and then show you what's next. Before I get too ahead of myself here, actually, I want to want to show you. So when you open up your kit, this is a Ford lock cylinder kit. Uh, I did not go buy it, so I don't know if they still make them. This was with the truck when I purchased it. So what you're going to see in it is you're going to see two of these. These are the actual tumblers themselves. And then you're going to see there's two of these. These are the retainer clips. So these slide through the side of the door over the cylinder kind of like that and lock it in and then you're going to see two of these rubbers now where these go is they go in between the lock cylinder right in here and the door and they work like a water seal and then they should give you a key with it no matter what kit you're buying okay so i'll start by taking these out so this is the only one you got to remember where it goes this is the longest one it doesn't have a lot of thread on it but it is a query long screw. So this is the longest one. That's the only one that you need to remember where it goes. All the other ones are the same. So let me get this guy. You don't need this fancy electric ratchet. I'm just doing this for speed sake. Uh, and then you're gonna pop this cover off. It's a little stubborn. You just grab it. I like to grab it like right here and then just give it a little pull and then you can work it off. And then all you gotta do then is just spin it and then right in there, you can see there's your little Torx bit. Let's change it out on my ratchet real quick. And do, 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 do. Okay. So you see I'm in there with the Torx bit. That is the only other different one. So now you just, that just comes right off. And I, you drop the screw on the ground and then you never find it again. So this is all the pieces that'll come out of the uh, the window crank. So here's this guy. There's the hole through it. Here's your little Torx T27. And then this is just a little thrust washer that keeps the door skin from getting chewed up. It just sits in there. Uh, that you don't really have to put it back in, but if you pulled it out, just put it back. Now, turn the flashlight back off. All you need to do, at least what I did, was just give it a good pull there. And a good little pull right here. Work your way around the bottom. And then I get it lifted up. Now you see we're hitting that guy. So push it open a ways. And then you can pull that back and away like that. Then you just got to get it up over the door lock. So lock the door. And then just lift. 
Now this part is a little tricky. I might need two hands for it, but uh, what I'll usually do is once I get to this point, then I'll take one hand and I'll kind of open this a little bit and then I'll give the, the door skin kind of a twist and slide it that way into the cab of the truck. It's uh, it ju You just need two hands for it, otherwise I could show you. So now like I was talking about on the other side, this is a separate piece. You do not need to pull this off to do this job because underneath here is just solid steel. Uh, but here's that other screw I was talking about and then the other one over here. Uh, so then now your next step, because the door lock cylinder lives at the edge of the door, you want to peel this plastic away just a little bit. Just enough that you can get yourself in there to work. But uh, you're, you're going to need two hands for this or you're going to tear it or if you're trying to do it without tearing it, it's just going to take forever. Uh, you do not need to put this back in, but they do make the road noise a little quieter, things like that nature. I like to just put it back. So I'm going to pause for a sec while I do that. And then now's the time that you realize you forgot to roll the window up because it's in the way. So you just take the crank, you don't even need to put the screw back in it, and just roll the window up. That's a, that's a necessary part. See how much more room you have in there now? You can actually get in there. Now it is going to be too dark to see in there. I'll see if I can get a flashlight set up permanently. Or maybe I'll just turn this flashlight on. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it in there. But that little guy way in the back with the little rod there, the yellow bit. If I can get the light to focus. There we go. So that's the lock cylinder there. So that little clip you're seeing around it, that is this guy. So I'm going to go grab some pliers and then I'll show you what I did to pull it out. Okay, so I got my pliers. I just grabbed some needle nose pliers. So this is what I did. I just took the pliers and I tucked them in here like so and then with this rubbery bit of the handle against the cab or the door I just pry it out. Now it does get a little stubborn but I just go take your time with it side by side so that side's out and then you get this good pry and it's out. Not that hard. They can be stubborn but that one wasn't great. That one wasn't too bad. So now, you can go ahead, close the door a little bit, and you can try and, okay, thanks. You can try and pull that lock cylinder out now. Now you may notice yours doesn't have the, uh, the little rubbers around here. That's normal, that's fine. You don't really have to worry about it too much. It's, uh, that's kind of a revision that Ford did. So, uh, once you get this kind of out, usually what you can do is if you go ahead and Unlock the door. So down is locked, up is unlocked. So you unlock the door. Then you can get this to kind of twist, move around, and then you can kind of get it to, to come out. Now you're going to see in there, there's a, uh, if I can get the camera in there good enough. Oh, come on. So you see that? That is just a rod and a clip. It's just kind of oily. Uh, so what you want to do is you want to get the rod out. So you need to come from the inside. It's, uh, it's not really something I can show on the camera, so I'm going to have to just do it. And then I'll show you guys what you need to do once I get all the parts out. Okay, so this is the little clippy bit that you're going to fight with a little bit. So I would have recorded it in there, but, uh, there's just no possible way. It's too tight. Uh, so the way that these work, it's identical on each side is uh, they've got this little yellow tab so you can see that there's space underneath it so the lock rod actually goes into this and then gets uh, this guy clipped behind it so what you got to do is you got to kind of uh, can't really do this with one hand but you got to bend this little bit here it's very flexible you got to kind of push it this way and behind the rod and then you can just slide the rod right out so then what you're going to want to do is take this over to the bench with your other lock cylinders, figure out which one goes where, and uh, then install them. Now uh, these are sort of directional. It, uh, it doesn't really seem to matter actually what way you install them. I put the wrong one in this side, and uh, I'm, I'm not fixing that mistake because it works. If this side binds up then I'll, uh, I'll fix it properly. But Really, if it's upside down, it's not going to bother anybody. It's just whatever. So, 
I, I put the wrong one in, but it doesn't seem to matter. They seem to work either way. Um, so what you want to do now is you want to get this yellow clip out. So yeah, it's, it's easy. You just press all these tabs in and it slides out and then you put it into the hole of the new one. Now it's not going to fit very well. It does kind of suck. Uh, don't ask me why they suck like that, but they do. It is what it is. You got to deal with it. So uh, before you do anything, take the rubber piece, put it on here. Make sure you clock it correctly. As you see, it's got these four little bits there. So does the O-ring and then so does the door. So you just got to make sure that this sits in there nicely. So that's how you want it to sit in there. And that's it. Uh, and then take that little clip apart, put it in there. So then when you go to install it, it should look like this. Well, actually, really, on the passenger or the driver's side, it should look like this. That's the right way for the lock cylinder to go, but, well, I screwed it up. So whatever, it's no, not a big deal. The, uh, the, it's, it doesn't work with any other key still, so I, I'm not too worried about it. It is what it is. Um, yeah, so that's what you want it to look like. Now, one thing that I found does help, you see this little snap ring? or not snap ring, C-clip on the back here, you take your pliers and you put one end here and one end here and then you hold it like this and then you just push that C-clip off and then you hook the rod up to this guy individually. That helps a whole heap of a bunch. Because trying to move this thing around the right direction, it, you're never going to get that rod back in there. So uh, the other thing to consider is because they don't actually cut a groove here, these, uh, these squeeze tabs are a lot tighter. Uh, I'll show you on one of the older ones. Take a look at it. You see how they kind of machined an edge in there for it, if it can focus. You see how they kind of, oh, come on. You see how there's a little edge there that they have machined? Yeah, these new ones don't have that. So uh, the, the rod is a little bit more of a pain to push in. So all you got to do is push it in, and then you want to just move this rod, or this little yellow bit here up and around it so that this can hold it in and then nothing's going to move on it that's how it's held in uh then you can go ahead and put these back together but i i can kind of show you that with uh with recording it myself so where's my flashlight why is it not turning on i don't know if you're gonna be able to see in there i can't use my flashlight but uh yeah that that rod is uh let me get my flash Hey, that's better. My camera flashlight's dead, so I don't know how well you're going to be able to see that. There. Let me pull this out a little bit. There. So you see how that rod's in there. So you need to maneuver this guy. To pull it out, you got to push the thing kind of back towards you and over that way. And uh, this is the same clip on the other side. You got to do the same thing. This side sucks a little more because it's in a little harder space, but it is what it is. Uh, and then to put it back in, it's a reverse. You just want it to wrap around and go in. Now you do need to force it pretty good to get it through there. That is a very tight fit. But uh, once you get it in there, it ain't coming out. So you know you're good to go. Okay, so once you get that snap ring back in, if you, uh, you want to do what I did, you make sure you drop the, the new one into the land of Narnia where you'll never find it again. Uh, just put the old one on it. Make sure that you put this uh, this rod the right way because there is a, uh, a uh, cutout area. I'm not gonna be able to really show it there. Maybe if I go to an old one. Storms are coming. So if you look on this old one, you can see how there's this little notch here on the top of the lock cylinder that coincides with the cutout in the arm. You need to make sure that you flip the arm into the right orientation and then there is only one way that these lock cylinders can go in. So I actually didn't put them in upside down. I put them in the right way. I just confused them. So uh, this wider base goes on the bottom and then you always, no matter what you're doing, whatever side you're putting this together on, this notched bit needs to face upward. So if you screw it up like I did, then you're going to have to take that... Um, you have to take it apart and fix it again. So it's not that big a deal. And then make sure you grab your new clip. I already brought mine over there. So there's your new clip. Yours may look a little different. And then all you want to do is you want to get this lock cylinder. You know, oh, my flashlight's dying. 
that's okay. We don't really need it that much anymore. This is all coming down to just the last final touches. So you get it in there, you get it as flush as you can, and then I need two hands to actually put it in. But this little slit here, you should be able to see, actually I might not need to, you should be able to see that when you're putting this clip in, if you can actually see that, I don't know, but when you put this clip in, number one, you want the fold coming towards you. And then once you can kind of get it started, you just give it a little push, 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 and then it gets to a point where you can't push it with your thumb anymore. But now look how tight that sucked to the door. So what I did was I just took the base of my pliers and I just gave it some love taps. A little bit each on each side. And then kind of make sure you're pushing it like with the with the pliers, you want to kind of go this direction with them. Just take a look there. See, that's nice. That's all good. And then that's usually about as far in as I can get them. And then if you take a look in there, you can see, yeah, it's grabbing both sides real nice. Now, all you want to do is just try and get both of them so that they're fairly even like that. And then there you go. You're done. You got the cylinder installed. So then you just got to get your key and test it out.